The event, uh, as you can see, has hundreds of people that come out and uh, it's a great experience. It actually starts months in advance. It doesn't just start today. We started working on this back in the spring, uh, so a good six months ago or more, planning, anticipating what would go into it, uh, submitting funding requests for grants, putting together a plan of how we'd accomplish it. Then uh, after we received that, then we knew that we could move forward. And so we began back in September, making plans about what would actually take place. And uh, that's actually when we start buying in elements and ingredients. We actually started then with 250 pounds of chicken uh, that we bought, boneless, skinless, make it easy, cooked it all, prepped it, took three days of cooking, froze it, uh, and then as the time went by, we prepared everything. And then this last week, actually, you know, we had the flyers and everything ready. And then this last week, we started the process again of buying all the ingredients, all the necessary things. We have the rice, the beans, uh, the sauce, all those elements that happens. We've already been here this morning for probably five hours or more, and uh, that's part of the process to make it happen. But as you look out at the at the crowd that's here, it's a great turnout. We have all these all these people that come. They enjoy learning how to make tamales or remembering how to make them. Maybe some people still do it at home, but a lot of them things they've forgotten. So they go through that process. Little things like filling which side is the smooth side of the yoja versus the rough side to know where to put the, the masa. And then they get to take part and enjoy the, the, the cultural programming. We have entertainment, we had mariachi, we had uh, dancing, various different dance groups. Um, it's just you know a lot of camaraderie and friendship. And then they get to take part in this great meal. And uh, so we've got everything, the beans, the rice, the chips, the salsa, and of course the tamales. And, uh, then we've got aguas and all the drinks and just a fun time for everyone to come and enjoy. And uh, it's about remembering friends, remembering past, remembering family, and making new ones. And uh, with that, it's a great experience. So I decided to join this year's uh, annual Tamalada because Dr. Nepp uh, was promoting it. Uh, I think this event is great. I'm very thankful for Dr. Neb, CCB, and South High for putting this event together. It's not only uh, great for the students on campus, but it's a free event for the community. I think it's great that they get to be able to learn how to make the tamales. They get to, you know, have this experience. We all get to eat them later. We get to enjoy some entertainment. All the uh, wellness resources available are great. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm honestly, I am thankful for being here. Uh, it's the first time I ever do it, and I think it's great as I've already said um, I think it's uh, we should have more of these events whether it's either like on campus or off campus it's just uh, great to get to see the community come together as a whole especially during the the holidays uh, people uh, tend to do this a lot I know at my in my home we always make tamales I tend to help my mom with the easier things so this is like a big change for me um, I don't know, it's just a little bit different actually getting to have the title of, you know, helping or teaching other people to do it. Um, I think this is great. I think my mom would be proud. <laughs> and um, I hope everyone is enjoying this and I hope that everyone gets to take home, uh, you know, great memories from this. So my name is Drexler Alcantara. Um, I'm from Portoville, California, and I came here to South High School to volunteer my time and learn how to make tamales. I personally never made tamales and I wanted to learn how so I could uh, make it in the future for future um, events. Uh, so, do you think it's a hard process, easy? What's your, uh, what do you think about it? So, when I first uh, tried it out, I thought it was pretty hard spreading the masa all over. Um, but then I got, I got used to it. Um, my friends had taught me how to do it the, the proper way and I don't know, it's, it was, it's pretty fun, like learning new stuff and learning how to make new food and stuff like that. So, you guys and your family don't make tamales, so what do you guys do for like the holiday season? So, I come from a Filipino culture, so during the holiday seasons we usually um, make, or we, we come together as a family and make dishes called um, bansit, uh, lumpia, also known as egg rolls. Uh, we make chicken adobo, which is very, a very popular Filipino cuisine. See, you see it all over, um, you know, the community, and yeah, like this is very uh, different for me. 
Uh, I've always wanted to learn how to make tamales because it's very popular during the uh, holiday season. Um, so yeah. So have you eaten tamales before? Or? Uh, I have, I have. Um, I grew up with uh, Hispanic friends, but I've always wanted to learn how, like what goes into tamales or how, you know, how to make one. So this is uh, another reason why I'm here, so yeah. Great, okay, so one last question. Um, is there anything you would like us to know about either your culture or about the tamalada? Mm -hmm. Something that you really want to say? Um, so I, I believe that the Filipino community and the Mexican community all mesh together. Um, I, you know, we, I like, for me personally, I like trying new foods. Um, and having this experience re made me realize how, how grateful I am to, to be part of a, you know, predom or dominantly Mexican culture in the, in the city of Bakersfield. Great. So one last question. Uh, do you think this event will uh, lead you to volunteer to other events or related to Yeah. So I personally like volunteering. Um, I think I'm at the stage of my life where it's time to give back to the community. And what better way to, you know, give back by making tamales and, and giving back to the community. Mi nombre es María Rodríguez, eh, mi familia hacemos muchas, muchos tamales, pero nunca había hecho una tamalada o nunca había participado en una tamalada. Soy mexicana, entonces nos encantan los tamales de rajas, de chile verde, de pollo, eh, y venir a este evento comunitario es, se me hace muy bonito porque gente de, de toda la comunidad puede venir, si no saben hacer tamales, eh, practicamos con ellos y nosotros también, que no está, por ejemplo yo que no estoy tan acostumbrada a hacer tamales, es una práctica para mí. Y se me hace muy bonito porque vienen las navidades y eh, quien haya aprendido a hacer tamales se, se va a inspirar para hacerlos. Entonces me gusta y que haya interacción entre la comunidad y que um, se divulgue de alguna manera un poquito de nuestra cultura hispana y mexicana. Uh, my name is Erika Alcantara and I am helping today as a volunteer. I did this my second year, so... It was a really good experience the first time around, so I wanted to do something good. It's a pretty fun experience, especially because I get to help out, which is what I really love. I really enjoy helping the community in any way possible, whether it's through the homeless, through my family, like communities like this, carnivals, etc. It's really fun. So can you tell us a little bit about the uh, tamale making process since it's the second time around? Okay, so I grew up in a, a Mexican family household. My grandma would teach uh, me how to get it. Um, so she would sit us on the table and tell us, you guys gotta sit here and learn how to make them. So we usually started off um, having the, what's it, the hoja de tamal, putting the masa on top, just in the center, and then adding whatever condiments or whatever we needed, and then just wrap it around and kind of squish it so it would be evenly distributed. And then right here, I learned a different way. So I thought it was pretty cool that, you know, there's different ways to do it not just how my grandma would teach me. So it's kind of difficult to adjust, but at the same time, it's pretty fun to do it. So, uh, Erica, is there any additional remarks you'd like to tell us or anything about the tamale process that you, you, you want us to really know? I think there's no correct way in doing a tamal as long as you do them with your family. You can add whatever you want. I think it's never, like, you can do it with whatever, whichever, however, as long as you do them and you have a good time with them and experience new things with your family and friends. My name is Maria Pais and I am helping here today because it's my second time experiencing this tamalada event in a community. The reason I'm trying to learn much of Mexican culture is because my children are half Mexican, so I'm trying as much as possible learn also Mexican culture, that way I could teach them. Well, I'm Guatemalan, our Tamales is much different from what this is, and so it's my second time doing Mexican tamales here. Okay, so uh, can you give us a little process of uh, what tamales you guys make? Uh, well, like the masa is different. Here they're using the, uh, masa for tamales, but 
we make we use tamales for tortillas. It's the the masa is much different. Okay, so when you put it, do you put it on like a, or is it a different type of hoja? Uh, it's a different type of hoja. It's a um, plantain leaf, and um, we have to wash the leaf just like this one. We have to wash the leaf, make sure it's clean, and once we the leaves are ready, we have to put the masa on the the leaf, but it's kind of like just in the center and then we could fill it in with any type of meat personally i like duck in the tamal um but you the we're used to putting raisins any type of other fruits bell peppers um and whatever we could think of with the vegetables when we when we are done making the tamales because even the folding is different from here we put it the, the masa in the middle with the meat and then we fold it into making it like this. Oh, I don't want to bend. <laughs> okay, yeah, and then we fold it this way. Oh yeah, I can't fold it. Just the edges this way, and then this one this way. That way it comes out like, a, like yeah. Kind of, it's like a rectangle more. And then we fold it around with aluminum foil. And then each one. And then once they're done, we put them in the in a big pot. It's much bigger than the ones that are here. Can you show me with your hands? Like uh, it's about this big. And how tall? Uh, about this tall. Okay. So yeah, we, that's why we make so, too many. Um, we then we stack them this way. We don't put them on the side like here. They're they're standing them up. They they're this way. And then we just put them in until it's filled up. And we have to put um, we cover them with the with any leaf that is um, left over. And we put a little bit of water, that way the vapor um, boils them. And once they're done, then... My name is Candace Livingston and my family actually we do we make tamales every year and so when this when the tamalada started my dad told me about about it and that we were going to go out and record it and so I was like okay that sounds cool I want to go out too so, Great. so I, you mentioned uh, your family makes tamales yeah uh, how is the process different or the same from today so we actually, uh, the way that my family does it is one of us makes the chicken, the other person will make all the, the masa. Uh, we all go out as a family together to buy the hojas and uh, everything to make the masa. And then we usually clear off our kitchen table. We all sit around the table and then we just take the hojas, get the masa, spread it on. What's your earliest memory of seeing people make tamales? And what's uh, your the age that you were first invited to make tamales? So the first time I saw someone make tamales was actually also my first time being invited to make tamales. Um, my dad, I think I was like 10, somewhere around that age. And my dad was in the kitchen, started making tamales, and I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, I'm making tamales. You want to check it out? And I was like, yeah, let's see. What is this? Like, So he was explaining to me. My dad grew up in Arvin and his friends would invite him over to make tamales. So he started making tamales too, and we had never made them before, and so my dad just started it up one time, and we were like, okay, let's try it. Great, okay. So uh, is there any additional remarks you'd like to tell me about either the process or uh, maybe the way your family makes tamales? To me, uh, making tamales is a bonding experience um, no matter who you're doing it with because you're spending so much time making tamales that you got to talk about something and so that's the main thing that we usually get out of making tamales and I think that it's really important.